okay. You may think, an additional of these videos about all that I've knit in 2023 or 2022 or next year is going to be what I've knit in 2024. And you've seen that these videos about everywhere. My intention is not to really talk about everything that I've knit last year, even though I have everything that I've knit around me. I'd rather talk about the experience I had knitting it, the pleasure or the pleasure I had to pair one yarn and one pattern. And also, am I wearing these knits and uh, am I enjoying them? So hello, hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my very small place on the internet when I talk about my knitting experiences and adventures. My name is Isabel and I am in France and today it's going to be a video I kind of thought about where am I going to be uh, putting this video, which playlist are, am I going to be using, either my knitting adventures or the woolly stories. I, I thought I was going to place it under my knitting adventures. So it's one of my first videos I'm filming this year. I've already uploaded one and it's quite late. I've had a long day and it's very late and there is no outside light. So I have to rely on inside lighting and I think I'm very yellow and orange. I'm not sure why, but I'll see how the, the video is and I may have to record that again. So. If what I've knit last year and what I'm feeling about my knits is of no interest to you, you may, we will see each other in a future video. You don't have to watch it, of course. And, but it's if that type of video is of some interest to you, if me reviewing my patterns, the ones I've made, the ones uh, I'm wearing the garments or the accessories from is of some interest to you, please stay tuned. So first, what am I wearing? I am wearing my Agnes jumper by Camila Vad and it's a knit of this year. So I'm not going to be elaborating much on this sweater as I'm going to be talking about it later on. It's quite cold right now in France. We have a cold wave, but of course, for all of you who are living further north in the Northern Hemisphere and are experiencing the winter, my Normandy is by no means very cold to you, but it's very cold to us. So it's one of the moments I have the opportunity to be wearing my very, very warm knits. And I have been outside quite a bit today. And it was below freezing temperatures, which is quite unusual for us here. And so I'm, you know, I was seeking com comfort from mohair and the sweater I like a lot. So I was thinking, uh, how am I going to talk about what I've knit and my experience with the patterns and the yarn, the association with the yarn and uh, do I, uh, did I enjoy making all of these and am I wearing them and etc. I, I, I thought I was not going to go in chronological order. I will go by type of uh, things I've knit. So I have shawls, I have hats and little coals and hoods and mittens. And I have sweaters. So I think I'm going to go by category. And I also have a couple of the shrugs. And I'm going to talk about the shrugs when I'm going to be talking about the sweaters I've made. And I made the shrugs right after to be wearing with the sweaters. So I think this is how I'm going to be going. OK, so we are going to be starting with beanies. And there is one I don't have any longer. This is the one that I need from one of my co-workers. And it's the soft and cushy pattern I <laughs> decided to use. By no way, it was very close to what the pattern was calling for. I used some acrylic blend yarn or mostly acrylic yarn so that you can throw it in the washer. 
and not worry about whatever is going to be happening to the hat. I used a mold, a white and a black yarn because my aging eyes have a bit of a difficulty to be knitting with dark yarn and black yarn. So molding it with the white was one of the good ideas of this uh, beanie. And the white yarn, you've seen me knit a lot of things with that white yarn. My mother gave me al almost a kilogram of this acrylic and fluffy yarn. So it adds a bit of fluffiness and it's a bit airy and it's quite soft. So that was that beanie that I knit for my coworker and his coworker went to Bergen and brought me some yarn from over there. For myself, I've knit three, three beanies, if I recall correctly. And I've also knit one hood and two little cones. So I'm going to start with my mohair fibers pieces and the one that I have made the ones that I have made with the mohair from La Ferme de la Croche Coeur, which is the farm I go to during the summertime in Poitou to get, uh, to get some of her beautiful yarn and fibers. This mohair, I have my sweater, the beanie, and the shrug. A Saturday shrug, one of the families. I'm not sure it's uh, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, whatever. It's by Jackie Rose and it's basically a long tube. I made, uh, I knit that with one by one ribs and I used all the mohair I had left from my sweater in the shrug and in the beanie. The beanie is very warm and light, of course, because the mohair is very warm and light and I like when a beanie has a bit of a pointy end. Not everyone like, not everybody likes that. So I did not say my previous soft and cushy hat, the pattern was by Persoho and of course I have some mohair in my mouth. And so the, the pattern, this pattern is the softy hat that I have in 52 weeks of easy knits. And this mohair makes it very warm, light and fluffy, the same way the Saturday or Sunday or whichever shrug is, is there and the sweater. When I have every, all of these paired all together, I made one side a bit looser than the other one so that the top side is a bit more snug. Yes, I think it's the way. Okay, I think it's the way. And what I would say, the beanie is perfect. The sweater is just perfect. It's, it was an easy knit. It was an easy pattern, only two colors at a time. Very easy to remember, easy to execute, easy to knit. Perfect, I was off gauge. It was not difficult to adjust for my gauge and everything. One thing that I'm not sure I like with the Saturday shrugs or this kind of shrugs that are just big tubings, is that I'm not sure what to do with the neck. So I usually fold it, so, but you have to adjust for the neck. And I'm not quite easy with doing that all the time. The other thing that is a bit more of a concern to me is that it, these shrugs are perfect over, over a coat, over a sweater and it's not easy to wear them the way I like to wear shrugs or coals or shawls under a coat because it adds bulk to your shoulders and upper arms. It's not easy to wear a coat on top of that. So you have to move it up and then it's all bunching up and it's taking a lot of space because it's big and it's fluffy and it's warm and it's what it's supposed to be. So after having knit three of them, I'm not sure I recall if this was my second or, or my third, I think I will knit more coals or dickies, I guess that's the way you call it. Something that goes over the front, over the back, 
nothing on your shoulders and either a big coal or a hood on top of uh, on the top of the piece so that you can have your head warm too with that piece so that you can wear under a coat and there is nothing on your shoulders or on your underarms that are going to take much space and there is nothing also at the top of your body and then once you wear that kind of shrug it's sometimes very difficult to close a coat and I do understand it's better to have them on top of coats or jackets but on top of coats it's not wide enough for me to be comfortable and on top of jackets when there is a cold weather it's not enough to just be wearing a jacket and 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 a shrug so it's kind of an, a piece that I like the idea of. I like it for wearing it in the house. It's not easy enough for me to be wearing every day out, at work and outside of the house. So I, I'm happy I made this one. I'm using it in the house, but not too much outside of the house. The beanie, whenever I wear this sweater, this is the beanie I wear. I'm very happy I need some accessories with my sweater. And I guess that's one point that I like much is having enough yarn. And this is why I usually buy more yarn than I use, that I need for a sweater. It's because I like to make other accessories that are going to be going well with that sweater and the beanie is the perfect example the shrug is another one and this sweater is i always have compliments when i wear this sweater so all of the patterns were easy to knit not difficult to follow not difficult to adjust for a different yarn because i used the yarn i had in my stash and this is mohair from um, the Poitou, where I went a couple summers ago, I went last year and I went the year before and I discovered it. And this is silk mohair. And it's a mohair quite different from the one I get from the Pyrenees. It's much softer. It's not fluffier, but it's much softer. And it's, it's the way the mohair is produced the one I buy in Poitou, it's, it's all, everyone, all the different farmers and, and shepherds from the cooperative or the common, the common company that they have created and they all are all members of, they all pull all of their production together, they grade it between very fine and very soft for silk mohair and baby silk mohair to cruder or coarser mohair for knitting mattresses or ponchos and stuff like that, mechanical knitting and everything in between. And when they sell, they ship, sorry, when, once they ship their production to the mill, they grade their own fibers and they say, I have that much kilograms or whatever of that grade and that grade and that grade the mill grades it again to verify that they do have written everything correctly and once the wool or the yarn yeah the wool the all the fiber belonging to everybody is processed all together they receive back bags of yarn that maybe they have asked to be dyed or just natural colors and stuff and of the same quantity that they have shipped. So this mohair has a very regular or a very reproducible quality and feel over the years. And, and it's a bit different from the mohair from the Pyrenees where the lady processes her fiber herself and uh, it makes a very different type of, of uh, fiber. So am I happy with that? Yeah. Do I recommend any of the patterns? Yes. 
it's easy. It's easy to adjust to your own yarn and it's easy to knit. Which a different gauge, the sizes were large enough for me. I have to check if they, this is size inclusive enough. But the sizes were enough, large enough for me or wide enough or to me for this sweater so that I can uh, adjust for my yarn. Okay, so yes, the Agnes jumper goes from XXS to 4XL. So maybe people kind of say that being very size inclusive goes to 6XL, it goes only to 4XL. But I guess if you can play around with a different yarn, you can knit a piece that is a bit bigger than what the pattern has as far as sizes. Okay, so to continue, it's not at all the way I had planned and I had announced at first, of, at the beginning of this video, please forgive me. We are going to continue on the mohair trend and I, I just talked about the mohair from La Ferme de la Croche Coeur. We can talk about the mohair from the farm in the Pyrenees where I go during the summertime. This sweater, I had this mohair in my stash for a very long time. I will write somewhere down wh when, when I bought it. I guess I had it for several years back, at least two years back. And uh, so this is the Cozy X by Intermstein. I need, once again, very off gauge. And I kind of need... In a, not really what I wanted. It's not the way I wanted uh, the sweater to look like. It's extremely boxy. It's extremely comfortable. And I do wear it a lot. And I have more hair about <laughs> everywhere in my mouth. And I do wear it a lot, even though that is not the way the pattern looks like. It's much more fitted to the body and you can see that you can knit a different a completely different sweater from what the pattern was calling for with a different yarn i was off gauge once again i'm not sure you can see it very clearly on the side the cozy x has a detail on the side with the x maybe you can see it that way maybe a little bit that comes from the bottom from the front and goes into the back and that comes from the back and goes back into the front. There is a split hem with a detail where the hem has a lot of room in between the front and the back. And I like this kind of detail because sometimes when you have a split hem and there is not much room between the front and the back, maybe sometimes the hem rolls, rolls up or get stretched out and I think this kind of detail is very comfortable and I've made it again or I copied it in one of my other sweaters because I liked it. You can see I have attached a little knot so that I can see where the back and the front of the sweater is and this one is the mohair from the Pyrenees and the lady processes a yarn so she goes from mill to mill Sometimes it's not always the same meal that processes the yarn because she has a very serious environmental guidelines for herself. And the mohair feels a bit different. This mohair feels a bit softer. It's a bit fluffier. This one is a bit, just a tad, just a tad, just a bit, just a little bit more rough and I need to brush it to have the fluff come out because you see I've been wearing it a lot and on the sleeves you don't see the fluff coming out after wearing it. Almost no peeling. These sweaters, this one and my Cozy X, these are the kind of sweaters you can throw at the bottom of a bag all bunched up. When you take them out they are perfect. So mohair is that way. You can, you can store it, or I usually take care of my things, but you can put it in a bag and it gets all around things and, and, and it's, you have some weight on it and it's flattened and everything. 
when you take it out, it's the way you can wear it and it's perfect. So this is why I like mohair and of course it's not mohair that you can, it's not a fiber you can wear, it. you can wear during the summertime unfortunately. So with the mohair from the Pyrenees, some of it I used up all the rest, so this appears a bit red, it's pink, it's bright pink. So I used mohair from many other years back. In that Saturday, Sunday, whichever, Friday, Monday, Tuesday shrug by Jackie Rose, I used the green to go with my Cozy X. And I've sent the green out, the rest of my green, so to someone. So I don't have it any longer. I do have some of that yellow. I doubled up the yellow because it's a bit lighter. It's, it's a lighter fiber. And I used the dark blue. And I do not recall if I, have, if I have any left of that dark blue or if I've used it. And I think I have some left. And what I had decided is used is to use that dark blue to knit another Cozy X, but more at a smaller size so that it gets a bit more fitted and it less, less boxy and that I can wear at work. It would be easier for me to wear it at work because this one has a very, very relaxed fit and don't get me wrong, I love that, but it's not very dressy to be wearing it at work. So. This is why I would like to make another one with a more formal fit. Anyway, I don't have any more of that green. I love that color. I used to sh shy away from green for a long, 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 long time. And one of you kind of decided me to go back to knitting some green. So am I wearing it? Yes. Do I enjoy wearing it? Yes. I also, I, some, some nights were very, very, very cold. I have to say I used the Cozy X to sleep in. Can I say that? Can I say that? Yes, I can. So no, I, I, I still have a lot of mohair in my stash to be knitting from and I want to get to it. I want to get to knit everything I have and I have so many other ideas and this is a fiber I enjoy and I enjoy very much all of the patterns I've decided to knit with so far. Okay back to the accessories and the hats. So I was talking about green so let's talk about green. I need to just I'm not sure I recall if it was just before or just after. It was just before my Cozy X and this is what decided me to go into my stash and knit with the, the, green, the green mohair. So this is the Borrow Hood by Tori Yu and the yarn is by Biche Bush. So it's the Petit Lambs Wool and Le Petit Silk Mohair that one of you so generously gifted me with. And this color, once I've knit the hood and once I placed it next to my head and because I think it goes with my eyes and that's one of the reasons I was shying from this color because I thought it was too close to my eyes and making my eyes pop too much and I wanted to just be hiding. Yeah, so this petit silk lumps, petit silk mohair and uh, petit lamps wool, in, it's in dark blue turquoise. And depending on the light, it's either leaning green or leaning a bit blue. I love the hood and I only have one. I've said I wanted to make more hoods. I only have one. I only have this one. I wear it a lot. I love it and I guess I should be washing it again. It's a very clever construction. So I have, of course, once again, I was not knitting on gauge for the pattern. And everything but the, the around the neck and the opening is knit with short rows and it's a very, very clever construction. 
Not at all, I was not nicknamed on gauge once again. I just used the numbers thinking maybe a bit different from what Tori Yu has intended for the hood. It's a bit bigger. I love it. It's, it's perfect when it's very cold and you have some kind of another hood from your coat or something. You, you can just put it very close to your face and it's extremely soft. You need hoods in your life. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm telling you, you need hoods in your life. And this one is very, very, very nice. The pattern, you can make two little flaps in the front that you can tie up. I did not like it and I did not make the little flaps. I just, there is the option to just finish it. Just plain, straight, plain finish. I wear it at work. A hood is rather, it's a not, it's not a formal piece. You see, it's more relaxed, more of a relaxed piece. But this one, I wear it at work. I can wear it in a formal environment and I feel quite comfortable wearing it in a formal environment. So I need to make more hoods. I love, um, so I'm, I think it's the first time I'm knitting with yarn that one of you gifted me with. I love to have meaning into my knits. This is something I discovered last year. Because I started the year before, at the end of the previous year in 2022, and during last year, some of you gifted me with yarn. And I made objects, so either accessories of, or sweaters or things like that with yarn that was a gift from some of you, a gift by what, some of you. And I discovered, I do love to feel the presence of some of you in my knits and in the things I wear. I did not know that before because nobody had been gifting me with yarn and I had always been buying the yarn I was using, so I did not know that at all. And I really love it's very yellow. I really love to be wearing things. It's not a call for you to <laughs> send the yarn to me, not at all, because I have plenty. But I really love when I take a piece and I say, okay, this one is, is present into my life thanks to XYZ. I really love that and I enjoy taking this hood every time because what once it's a nice pattern it's nice yarn yeah but also because one of you thought about me choosing the yarn and sending it to me and it makes my day every time every time so i hope i'm not going to say and bore you say saying that every time i knitting something with yarn you 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 gifted me with but that's the truth that's just the plain truth okay so let's stay in the accessories and let's, let's stay with yarn that people gifted me with. First, this gingham double knit call. Boy, was it a long, 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 long knit. This yarn was a gift by my youngest son and his girlfriend. And so they went to Lille Vessel last year sometime and they bought yarn for me for my birthday, my 60th birthday. So this kind of lavender, you may see it, it's a bit blown out, but I have, maybe I can have pictures. This lavender, this yellow. This call was a very, 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 very <laughs> long project because when did I start the call? Uh, I think it took me six months or even over six months. I started it in November, 2022, and I finished it in May, 2023. So I started it just after my birthday when I got the yarn. And it was very long to make. It was a very, not a complicated pattern. It was not difficult to understand, but double knitting is not easy. It was my first time using double knitting technique. And with the gingham, where on one side there is one color and the other side there is the other color, where you have some alternate, you alternate the colors on the, different, the other squares. It was not easy at all to keep track of what you were doing. And once, if you stopped, it was difficult to, 
to start again. So this is why it took me so long. Anyway, I finished it. There is a yellow border. There is a lavender border so that I can choose. But this yellow one is a bit tighter, so I usually wear it that way. So I have one, I had one ball left of each of the lavender and the yellow. With the lavender, I made the no pom pom hat by Intom Stein. And this was also was a gift. The pattern was a gift because I'm subscribed to her newsletter and for my birthday she sent me a code for either a small accessory or discount on a, a more expensive pattern. So this, this no pom pom was a gift to me. The pattern was a gift. I did not pay for it. Once it was a very easy knit, very straightforward, very easy. And it, I need that in no time. I need that in three days <laughs> in November, last November, after I got the pattern. Three days to knit the pom-pom hat, the no pom-pom hat. And you need the little pom-pom at the top of the hat. And, I, uh, and she recommends it. She recommends you stuff it. So I took one of my stockings that were not able, I was not able to be wearing and I had a whole pile to go to the recycle place for clothes and stuff like that. So I cut one piece and I placed it in, in, the, in the little pom-pom. You can knit it without a pom-pom and it's kind of an art deco, she says art deco inspiration because you have columns and you have little, you have so it's neat colors, co columns, and you have little pearl details uh, at every other places in alternating columns and looks a bit like an art deco inspiration column or inspiration pattern. It's a bit lighter. And uh, for now, this is not the one that I'm, I'm wearing. I, I did wear it a lot when the weather was mild and, and rainy and foggy and I was unhappy. So this lavender color, which is kind of a springy color, is perfect, perfect for that type of weather where you're a bit sad and it's gray and it's raining and it's not completely cold. You can, you know, snuggle up into cold and sunny and you can snuggle up into your needs. It's just gray and gray and gray and it's just uh, rainy and rainy and rainy and the association of the two is just a perfect association for that happy feeling that uh, you can need when when the weather is not cooperating or you when you're not happy with the weather anyway i still have one bowl of the saffron or yellow color I'm not sure what I'm going to be making and as I have no idea, I'm just waiting for something to come up. And my children, my son and him, my younger son and his girlfriend did think that the combination of the two was, uh, they were happy with the combination of the two. This yarn is Superwash yarn by DMC and it's the Wooly Decay, I think that they got at uh, in Paris when, when they went over there. So once again, a, a couple, couple pieces where when I take it and decide to wear it, there is, there is my son and his girlfriend there and uh, their spirit is there and I do enjoy that very much. So once I'm there, when I'm in the hat and the small accessories, Let's talk about the most recent hat I knit. So when did I knit this one? It's Tries. It's by Marie Renier. And Tries, I guess it's Tri, uh, the French word for something that has rays or like rays of sun or some kind of ridges. And it's from the book La Bien-Aimée, Neons and Neutrals. So I did not quite use the neon and neutral vibe. There is a, a whole over gray hat in the book. So you don't, I guess you don't have to use a neon and a neutral. And of course you do the way you want. So there is a big, big, big brim. My sons do not like big brims. 
And my second son has asked for a hat for him. So I had to buy order some yarn to go with the call I made for him a couple years ago. So you'll see that in my next video about my yarn nobel year. So there is a big brim and I do love that. And in a way, I'm not sure, maybe you see here better. The pattern, I like the pattern on the top of the hat, which is the, pat, the uh, reverse, the right side of, because you have it here, and of the brim, the reverse side of the brim has a much more plain pattern. And I guess if one day I make that hat again, or if you are inspired by that hat and you want to make it, I would recommend when you need the brim, because you see it's the same pattern here, reverse it when you start to make the other color for the top of the hat, because of course it won't be the way the pattern is in the book, but I like this ridge here much better, much better than the ridge on the reverse side, on the right side that I like the ridge on the reverse side. And I, I kind of regret not having it on the bottom of the, on the, of the hat. Anyway, you can do any way you like. Once again, a hat that has a little pointy end at the end, and I blocked it out because it was a very funny point end that you could be mistaken, whatever, whatever. Um, I like this one very much. I used the dark blue turquoise mohair with yarn from uh, Atelier Purlaine, and it's the Romney by Atelier Purlaine, fingering weight. And I thought about using the dark blue turquoise mohair with it when I had an experience with my latest sorrel that is still a work in progress. And I was very unhappy with the way changing mohair colors was in the sweater with the dark blue turquoise. But at the end, I liked the morning effect of the mohair and the white yarn. So I said, okay, I want to do something with that. And I decided on, on a whim on the, on the Stries hat. And I cast it on when I was in Toulouse for my son's PhD. Uh, the day he graduated and I almost finished it in the train going back to my Normandy. So it was an eight hour travel with a one hour layover in Paris, but I had to rush from one side of Paris to the other side. So it was a bit, I did not have any time to knit in between, but so let's say it was a seven hour plane train travel and I knit almost all of it. And I just had to knit the top of the hat, the top of the beanie once I got home and it was finished. This is the hat I've been wearing the most recently during our cold wave here in France. It's very comfortable, it's very warm, it's uh, especially, so as, you know, when there is some wind, it's not warm enough, but if you have another hood on top of the beanie, it keeps you very, very, very warm because there is a lot of air in, in, in this beanie and it Air is what keeps you warm. So it keeps your warmth close to your body and you feel much, much, much warmer. So I wear it a lot. I blocked it and I knit the small size. It was a very, very, very easy knit. The pattern is not difficult at all, not at all. And uh, it was very easy. And I need the small size and I may, if I do it again, or if you are making it, be, be sure that it's a big, big on me. You see, it's a small size. It's just, it's just good on me. So if you need it for yourself and if you have a smaller head, maybe you can calculate and make one or two repeats less and it would be perfect for you. So as we were with Atelier Purlaine, let's talk about, I think it's my most worn piece of the whole year. I wear it almost every day. During the cold, cold, cold weather, it 
keeps me warm. It's the Sherbet Bandana by Laban Kid and it's the Romney Yarn by Atelier Purlaine. And Frédéric gave me that skein, it was 50 grams or something like that, because the yarn has a problem, had a problem, it's overspun in the mill, and it goes sideways when you need plain stock in it. And, and I said, okay, I'm going to test it out for you if you wish. So she gave me that, and, and of course, it's going sideways. It's extremely easy to wear, even if it's, it's not the proper color for uh, that type of sweater. You can see it goes very well with about everything. I think I've worn it almost every day since, since I finished it, whether the weather is very cold or just a little bit cold or is damp and it's, 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 not, uh, it's not a pleasant weather. It keeps, it keeps me very warm. So when did I need that? please. Yes. So I need it in June and it took me for five days to knit it. So I used the Lamben Kid pattern, which is for a much bigger gauge and a much bigger yarn. And the finished object by Lamben Kid is much bigger. I just got the inspiration for the increases. So I kind of use that when I was, and I was weighing out my yarn. And when I was halfway, I decreased the same way I had increased. And it all went easy, very easy pattern. This pattern is free. So you have many, many pet four patterns in the same, with the same idea of a kind of a triangular little scarf. Just use that and adjust for your own yarn. You can make any kind of pattern or color combination. It's just the sky is your limit. And I think, yeah, this one is the most, the, the one piece I've been wearing almost every day since I've finished it. And it's, the, the yarn is quite rough. Romney yarn is not, is not of the softest, but against my skin, if I, Scratch it, of course, it's a bit scratchy, but against my skin, the warmth I get from it is so enjoyable that I can go past the... Past? Past? I can go for... <laughs> I can ignore the little bit of scratchiness that I get from this yarn. So let's finish with Atelier Purlaine once we're at it. So... I need the pathway shawl and I'm not sure why my page, my Ravelry page doesn't want to open. It's been that way just before. Okay, it's opening. So I need it in 19 days in July, last July. And it's the pathway by May UKP. And uh, the book, uh, which is Contrast by May UKP, was a present by my eldest son last summer. So he, last, either last Christmas 2022 or my birthday, I don't recall. My 60th birthday, I do not recall. Anyway, so it's the Hampshire Down, uh, the Hampshire Down yarn that I'm using. It's the fingering fingering weight and pathway is a very 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 practical shawl i think it's a very versatile shawl why is it versatile to me because the cables are reversible it's exactly the same on either side because you make a cable on the right side and you make it with the pearls on the other side so it's absolutely reversible. You can wear it either way. You don't have to think, oh, that's the right side, that's the wrong side. Not at all. There is a garter triangle at some point, and then there is a ribbed end at the largest part. And and uh, I made, uh, I'm not sure I recall if it calls for an eye cord finishing or just one finish, but I made an eye cord to finish it. And once again, it's very easy to wear. And I think one thing I like much about this shawl, it's because of the yarn, because the yarn is, it's very rustic. It's very sticky. And when you 
place the shawl around you and you have a coat on top of it, it doesn't move. It sticks, the different parts stick on one on the other and it doesn't, it doesn't move. And the same way the tree or stripes, Bini is very, very warm. The pathway shawl is also very warm and comfortable during the colder days because it, it's a very rustic yarn. It smells very sheepy and uh, it traps a lot of air inside. And also the cable patterns make the three-dimensional a three-dimensional fabric that adds some kind of more air inside and it's very easy to wear. I, of course, with the cream and beige creamy color, it's easy to pair with about anything. And should I say it's my most, no, it's, I guess I wear my shawls in rotation. So it's not my most worn shawl for the whole year. Sorry, it's not my most worn shawl for the whole year. But I guess it's my most worn shawl for cold weather. I have another one that I've been wearing a lot from this year. And once again, once again, there is a bit of my son, my eldest son in this piece because he got me the book. Of course, I chose the yarn, I chose the pattern to knit with and he likes it a lot. He, he said it was a very beautiful piece. So yes, another one I'm also very happy with. Okay, so before we continue to the shawls, I'm going to sneak in a pair of mittens that I've knit also with some yarn that my second son, Theo, brought me from Cardiff. He was at a science conference in September 2022, and he got yarn for me in a yarn store that was over there. And this, this is a free pattern, it's the Annette Mittens. Let me see who's this, the designer. It's Lorian and Charlie, it's the Annette Mittens. I like them very much, I wear them a lot. I have to say, with that wool that is, and I think I've seen it's not made any longer. Marino, Marino pure, pure wool, Merino wool, it's peeling a lot. So of course, I when I want mittens, this is the ones I'm wearing. I'm wearing them a lot. It's been peeling a lot. It's the the shawl I made and the little call I made with the gray and blue for the shawl and the red for the little call that he, he chose several colors and the gray. Do not peel as much, but maybe because I'm not wearing them as much. I've been wearing them a lot and I like the little butterfly pattern detail on the on the on the back of the hand. Very easy pattern. I re do recommend it. Do I like the yarn very much? Not quite, but it has a very nice stitch definition and I have to de depeal them a lot. So I do wear them a lot because there is one of my sons inside of these mittens and but would I buy the yarn again? No and you see this is not even a piece where I changed or uh, yeah because still chose the yarn for me. Okay two shawls that I've made there, there are some more on the way with yarn that Rosemary sent me from Australia for my birthday. Two very nice shawls that I've been wearing. They still have my summer perfume in them. I'm still wearing, I've been wearing a lot during the warmer days because it's yarn that is less, less warm than the one from Atelier Purlaine or some of the shawls I have. So this shawl is a pattern by Helen Stewart and the yarn is uh, Lou and Lola Merino singles. So Rosemary chose the yarn for me and she also sent the pattern to me, which is, has been 
specially designed for this yarn. And I do love the flowiness. I do love the drapiness of the yarn. And I like the pattern very much. I had a bit of a hard time knitting the, the lace part. There are mistakes that you can't find, but I can't see, so let's say it's okay. And once again, a color that I do not buy for myself, and it kind of decided me on wearing more of this kind of purple tones. I really love it. It's, it's not pink, and I guess I, I'm a bit attracted to pink, but it's too girly for me. And I guess the purple is a bit colder and I, I really love it. I've been wearing it a lot. It goes very well with all my summer outfits and I wear, I mostly wear blue and dark blue or navy blue and it goes very well with it. Just imagine that shawl with a white shirt and a dark blue jacket. It's perfect even in, and especially in a formal environment. It's perfect to keep you warm, it's very flowy, it's very easy to wear, and it was an extremely good idea. Thank you, Rosemary. And once again, what I do love is that there is some of you in, in there. You, you chose that for me, and it was a very, very, very good idea. So is the pairing of the yarn and the pattern, I liked it. Is it, is it good? Yes, of course, it's good in my opinion, because it was designed to go, the pattern was designed for that yarn. And Helen Stewart goes dry or takes you by the hand from row one to the last row. And when you need, you know, you have 10% done or 15% done or 50% done. And I, I, I know some to some people, it's a bit difficult to know that you have only 25% done and then you have the feeling you've done half of the piece, no, and you're only a, a quarter of the way. But I did really much appreciate to know where I was towards the completion of the pattern. Because to me, it was not a burden to know I was only 20% in. It was a good guideline to, to me to know that I still had 80% to be doing, so I still had to be working on the show, if, that's, if that makes sense. So I did like very much her pattern, very, 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 very well written, and it goes very well with the yarn. And I, I you've heard me say that I prefer when a garment holds on to itself and I prefer rustic yarn. I have to say I appreciate a lot the drapiness of this shawl. Yes, I do. So another pattern with yarn that uh, Rosemary sent me. This one is the Dotted Rays by Stephen West. And when she sent me this yarn, it's a uh, Tandai Polworth yarn that is not, and yarn um, woolen silk that is not made any longer. It's not in the offering. They have other 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 yarn. It's also yarn from Australia. She sent me some yarn that it was some leftover from some of her projects, other projects. I think she had a sweater that she made with this very luxurious yarn. And I was thinking for a long time, what do I want to be making with this yarn? Well, I had sent her some of my Nomendi wool, rustic, rustic, rustic wool. And I've seen, I, I guess I had, I had placed a bit of mohair in that package. And then I sent another one with more mohair. She had made the dotted rays with it. So I decided, okay, I'm going to be twinning with her as I do not know what, really what to do with this, with this wool. I'm going to be knitting the dotted rays. And I have to say, I love it. It's a perfect in between 
perfect in between bet uh, between the pathways, which is very rustic, very sturdy, very thick and warm. And here, the rainforest uh, canopy, so it, which is very flowy and light and, and, and more of a summery or spring or springy type of meat. This one is a perfect in between. It's flowy enough so that you can wear it and light enough so that you can wear it during warmer days, but it's heavy enough in a way that you can wear it under your coat during winter time. And it's a bit dressier than the pathway, which, which has a more rustic feel to it, and it's a yellow color or a yellowy, creamy color. And this, this is, to me, looks more rustic as a yarn, just from, from a saw, even if you don't touch it and if you don't know yarn, than this one, which is very luxurious, more white. And it's, I'm wearing it a lot during the intermediate season when it's a bit colder because it goes very well with about everything as it's quite white. It's warm, it's light, it's flowy, and it's drapey. And I made mistakes, and once again, I do encourage you <laughs> to, to knit the dotted rays by Stephen West because your mistakes are hidden. Some of my little holes openings here are not uh, perfectly aligned. I finished in between the two sizes that the pattern calls for because I think either here or there was the small size. You had to stop for the small size. I guess it was on this line here. And the larger size called for a couple more repeats, I guess, or at least one more repeat. So I stopped in the middle because I had decided I was going to use all of the yarn and I had to cast off, I think it's here, with some of my whitest yarn. This is the acrylic yarn from my mother. So you see, it's not the same gauge at all. But once you wear it, you can see it. Some of the little holes are not aligned here either. Once you wear it, you don't see it. It was just before I kind of get the hang of the pattern and it was too far in, 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 in the pattern. I said, okay, I'm not, I'm not ripping out. I, I did not see it when I knit it and so I'm not ripping out. And I do wear it a lot. An easy pay piece, an easy piece, a flowy piece, a luxurious piece. And it goes very well either with a bit more relaxed type of sweaters or more formal shirt and, and jacket type of clothing. Okay, next, if we continue with the shawls, let's move to Calara because it has the same type of feeling. It's a very light and flowy shawl. And I bought this yarn, which is totally out of my comfort zone during a fair with my mother in 2022. So it's a dark plum. So it's on the reverse side. It's a dark plum with a very heavily variegated, bright sunset or sunrise type of colorway. And I had these, these two balls for quite a while and I did not know what to do. One of you suggested I choose to knit the Calara shawl by Amba O'Brien. Once you suggested that pattern, immediately it, it immediately clicked and I said, okay, this is the one I want to be making. So the, I did not have the Calara in my library and I have to say it's the only show, uh, only show, no, it's the only pattern I bought, only digital pattern I bought last year. And I bought it just before I cast it on. So when did I need this one? I need this one during the summertime, I did recall. It was in June. It took me two weeks to need the shawl. I guess I kind of I was kind of monogamous with this knitting. It's, it was very easy to, to knit. It's garter. You alternate color every other row. So you carry your yarn on the side. 
and you have a detail where, yeah, it's here. You have a detail where you decrease at some point and you increase at the other point to have, to have that type of little ridge. And once you've hit, it's not the middle point. The, the tip of the shawl is not at the middle. You start decreasing once again. A very nice pattern. I do encourage you to knit it. It, it looks very nice. It, it did take less or maybe half of the skins, half of my skins, of my two skins that were 100 grams. So you can make it also in only one color. I, I think she made it in two colors, uh, I think. And uh, very long, pointy ends, very flowy, easy pattern, mindless pattern. And you can associate very bright yarn with a darker one. And you see it makes a very wearable piece. It doesn't go at all with my, <laughs> I'm sorry, with my current sweater, but it's, it's a very wearable way to use very bright colors. If you do happen to have some of these skins in your stash, and you do not know what to do. Pair it, pair it in such kind of a pattern with the darker, a darker one that is in the same color range. You know, it's yellow and pink and pink and bright pink and uh, uh, darker pink and peach, peach and stuff like that with that very dark plum, very dark, yeah, plum. And uh, it's a way to be using these colorful skins you have in your stash. And if you are more in a, a neutral type of colors like I am, it does bring a lot of joy in, in, in your outfit. If you have a plain dark blue jacket and a plain white skirt for a formal event, it does bring a lot of color that a lot of joy and happiness and I do like to know that there is also one of you in there because you suggested the pattern to me okay last shawl this video is going to take forever to film and forever <laughs> to edit last shawl the fleur shawl which is a free pattern by Espace Tricot and I had the idea of this shawl when Jackie and Carmen started a uh, floral long, uh, make along or knit along with that pattern that they enjoyed a lot. And I said, okay, yeah, I like the pattern too. I have it in my library. It's a free pattern. I've had it in my library for a long time. Let's do it. So I decided to knit with, and there is one of you, Caroline, in that, in that shawl too with Nutiden and uh, Caroline had sent me some Nutiden after I had talked about my yarn kryptonite last year. If I remember, I will link the video down below where I talk about that yarn that I had been dreaming of knitting with in my no buy project. So she sent me some of her Nutiden. I sent her some of my mohair and mohair I got especially for her. And the yarn was here and I was thinking, it was not close by to me. And I was thinking, what am I, what do I want to make with the Nutiden? So with this one, which is parallel, so it's a gray beige, a gray base, sorry, a gray base and it's a, brighter pink and some kind I'm not sure I'm sorry the lightning is not good at all and I have not I have to recall not to be knitting during the evening but I had no other timing for doing this right now so this one is some kind of a fuchsia so if you have the fuchsia idea just think of a fuchsia fuchsia type of color on a gray base. And this is what parallel is with here and there pops of bright fuchsia. So I decided as a first time knitting with Nutiden, which is unspun yarn, to knit it single stranded, first, first adventure, and to make bubbles and not only bubbles, but 
big bubbles with the contrasting color. This white one, I do not recall what the name of the white is. Uh, I will write it if I can find it again. The white one was, so Nutidon is all just splitting just by and, and, and ripping out, just by looking at it. You look at it and, and it splits and it rips out. So the white one was even more splitted than just that. It was very difficult. I did go through the whole process. One thing I have to say is first, now I'm using some more of the Nutiden that Karin sent me. I knitted, I'm knitting it double. First lesson learned. Of course, I went all the way because I don't think you can happily rip out Nutiden without losing all the yarn. First lesson learned. Knit double. Okay, so I'm using it double. Second lesson learned. Jackie has talked about it and I should have thought of it. The fleur shawl is a triangle based type of shape of shawl with very long wingspans. And you do increase in the middle for the triangle part twice as fast as you increase for the wings. It makes a very large shawl, also maybe because Nutiden on big needles was making a big garment, but it's a big one. And this point in the back of the shawl, that the natural point, because even if my yarn is a bit bigger and my gauge was bigger than what the Espace Tricot or other people have made, um, the proportion is the same. And I think it's too pointy on the back in proportion to the very large wingspan, the very large wings. And so either, and I do agree, I think it's Jackie who did that, made, turned it into a crescent. And I think it's a better shape for very long wings on the side than tri a triangle. Anyway, that's the way it is. So what I do, I wear it that way. I fold, I fold the shawl in half on the point side and I wear it so I artificially make it some kind of a crescent shawl by folding it in, my, in the back. And then I have the very long wings that I can, you know, play with and with the bubbles. It's a very warm, Light and warm, Nutiden is light and warm, and I do confirm if, if, it, if it's ever needed, if you ever need that kind of confirmation. It's a very warm and cozy shawl. So I'm wearing it right now with, along with a parallel, I think it's the parallel shawl. It's, it's a very cozy shawl, a comforting shawl. Last week, it was on the back of a chair because I had just gotten back from work. I just went back home. And the lady who comes to clean the house just came just after I went back home. And she said, oh, what is that? So I explained to her and she liked it very much. Big white bubbles on this kind of grayish, pinkish, rosy type of colorway. It's also, even with that, sweater that is has color work and it's in the gray and white the white ties it together and it does go together very well it goes with about everything anything and the way you can put it around your shoulder it goes under a big coat it, you you can you can squeeze it under a big coat it doesn't take play takes much room not not as a the Saturday shrugs, for example, and it's more easy to wear this piece that is even bigger than the shrugs under a coat than the shrugs themselves. The bubbles draw attention because that lady, that the person who comes to clean the house, talked about the bub the both the shawls because of the bubbles, I think. And some other people at my work have stopped to me to say, oh, what? 
what are you doing? And so I'm knitting now lesson learned with Nutiden Held Double. So that's another experience. And I still have some leftover from these parallel. I have a bit of white and some of the parallel. I think I'm going to be making a hat or hood if I have enough or mixing with all the leftovers because Caroline has sent me several bits and pieces that here and of different colors. So I may make a striped hood or something like that with, uh, I have to calculate and see what I have. And of course, the way I described it, I wanted to have it. So it's kind of a dicky with the front, the back, nothing just on the tip of the shoulders, nothing on the arms and that, that you can wear in the coat. It's gonna be perfect, perfect. And I do like also that there is one of you in this, in this shawl. As always, when I, so it's always out for now with a parallel shawl too. I don't place them away in the morning. I take either one of them. And I do love to know that this piece is in my life, thanks to one of you. So to summarize, Fleur with the fleur shawl with Nutiden, yes, absolutely. Maybe consider making it less deep and continue to increase on the sides to make it more of a crescent shawl than the, the big V and the big point in the back because I, I fold it in half. I don't think the big V in the back is very practical and I do agree. I, I'm not sure I recall exactly what Jackie had said and why she had decided to make the crescent roll, but I think if you go to her video, she's explained it that much better than what I could do. Okay, so what this year, 2023, has told me to, in addition to everything that I've already talked about, is that I love rustic yarn. I knew it. I was not much into this kind of project of knitting with natural rustic yarn, unprocessed or little processed. Not too overdyed, even though I'm wearing quite a colorful sweater right now with mohair that has been dyed even if it was in an environmental conscious process. Um, I, I guess I established last year that I like to be knitting with natural yarn. Of course, I do enjoy all of the shawls I've made with wool that was not, that was either superwash or had other treatments. One, the first example of the sweater I knit this year in that type of idea is the Highland Thrissol sweater. The Highland Thrissol sweater is by Karen Hulbrook. Yes, Karen Hulbrook. And this was a pattern that was a gift by Amy Palco. Last year, she had some kind of a contest on, on her Instagram and I, I won the pattern. And the Highland Thrissol sweater I knit with Lena West it's yarn from my Normandy with sheep braid from my Normandy. It's rustic, rustic. And this one is undyed, is, it's, it's undyed. It's kind of a grayish brown or brownish gray with the different colored fleeces that they mix together and there is a proportion and they have different shades of, uh, they have darker ones and they have lighter ones. This one is Fleur de Sel and it's a mix of creamy white, creamy white, you'll see it this way here, creamy white and uh, darker fleeces. It's a very rustic, rustic yarn. I do love it because as I've said already, rustic yarn is dry, is a bit scratchy maybe, it's dry, it's plump and airy, or not plump, it's dry and airy and it keeps you very warm. And Normandy sheep live outside most of the time. Unless the one time I went, it was during the summertime, the sheep were inside because there were high tides and uh, all, the, all the fields where they usually graze were flooded and they were inside. But they usually stay out all year round because it's a mild and, hum mild and humid and not too cold, not too warm type of climate and uh, their yarn keeps you dry. 
keeps the moisture away. Of course, if you go under a heavy rain, you're going to get soaked. It's going <laughs> to, at some point, go through the yarn, but such as some kind of Nord northern t countries, northern Europe countries type of wool, this yarn is, keeps you dry. The pattern is really, rather really fun, really enjoyable to knit, easy. So the little three soles, you have them here with, um, I'm not sure I recall how she, what she said was on top of the three soles, but there is some kind of a um, wall on, at the bottom of the three soles and uh, the rest of the sweater is just plain in stockinette. I made a modification. I'm not sure I recall if the side fake seam was in the pattern or not. And I made the modification where I split the hem. I like this sweater a lot. Why? The pattern was easy. It goes very well with this rustic yarn. It it's quite close to the picture of uh, the original pattern. I made it a bit snug because I was and a bit short, a bit cropped. It's not very cropped, you see, but it's a bit cropped for me. And I was thinking I would wear it on top of dresses or stuff like that, the way other people say. And I guess I had inspiration by from these people. And the thing is, I have to say, I'm not very comfortable in snug sweaters. I do wear it, not as much as my other sweaters that are a bit wider, a bit boxier and everything. So lesson learned, my, my next sweaters are a bit less snug because the other piece I need quite a bit close to the body was I'm going to be talking, so let's talk about it right now. It's the M Worth by Isabel Kramer with also yarn from Le Lena West and it's the uh, Accroche Girl. Yes, the last one, the, the light one was Accroche Girl. This one is also close to the body, close fitting to the body. I respected this pattern. Uh, of course, I was completely off gauge and I did not think about my raw gauge that was off. I was thinking about my stitch gauge that was off and I made all the calculations and everything. I forgot about the raw gauge. So it's a bit deeper neck here and a bit deeper armhole, which, which I'm fine with. And this one is a bit closer to the body, but it does not bother me because I wear it on top of shirts and the shirt goes under, shows at the top, show, shows on the arm, and it's fine. A sweater with sleeves that is a bit closer, closer to the body, I'm less comfortable with. So I have to think of that and I may knit it again, knit the same pattern again on a larger size or, or not. Anyway, both, both of these pieces are made with yarn by Lena West. Normandy rustic yarn, dry, dry yarn that did bloom up a bit when I blocked it, but not, not that much because you see here with the lighter, the lighter yarn, I should, I should most probably see more of that lace pattern if the yarn had bloomed a lot and I do not. So I've been wearing it a lot. You see, it's there is some kind, a bit of a peeling on the yarn. There is less peeling on this one because I've been wearing it a bit less. And I do love vests. And I have to say that I plan to be knitting more vests. I need more vests into my life. And I have a lot of left, a yarn left from Lena West, so I, I can make more vest, either white ones or the, the grayish brown ones. And if we continue on to the yarn with uh, by Lena West, let's go to my Barbara sweater. The Barbara sweater, once again, there is one of you in this pattern because you gifted me with the book. The Barbara sweater is just another stunning piece and it's with Lena West, Accroche Coeur and Fleur de Sel together. 
So I was knitting off gauge once again. So everything went fine, fine, but my sleeves. My sleeves are a bit too long. So what I usually do, I put the cuff inside and I wear it that way. It's fine. I, I did try to arrange that so that the cuff is still showing. So maybe you see, try to be making something like that. But from the inside, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And the cuff always goes out. And I don't like three quarters or elbow length sweaters because I get too cold. So I like when the sweaters go down to my wrist that way. This one I like a lot, this length I like a lot, and I, it's my fault, it's my mistake. I did not think of it too much. I did think of it a bit and I said, oh, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. No, it's a bit too long, so I wear it that way. With the cuff from on the inside, and it's just fine. I've been wearing it a lot. It's one of these pieces also that People stop me, my, my co-workers, because I usually don't show it to, <laughs> I don't, I wear a coat, so my co-workers have stopped me to say, oh, where did you get that sweater? <laughs> and uh, it's, I love it. It's one, I've been wearing it a lot. I was wearing it when I went to my family for the end of the year celebrations, and my sister-in-law was kind kind of admiring it. It's a very funny construction. You start from the back, you knit the back up, you make short rows to shape the shoulders. You cast on a lot of stitches just before that uh, for the sleeves, and I should have casted on a bit less, but I did not think of it. And then you, so you shape the shoulders, and once you've shaped the shoulders, you knit for a bit for the front, you make the hole to to make the opening and then you decrease to to close the the sleeves so it's all sewn on the side and under the arms so you decrease the stitches you need the front and you make some kind of a ribbing at the bottom so I'm not sure I did respect I did not respect what they were saying because here, the opening for the head was too wide for me. So I did cast, uh, I did pick up the way I thought it was the best to pick up the stitches so that you don't see it much. And then I decreased a lot and I made some kind of a totem neck with two by two, by two ribbing. I think it's two by two or three by three, something like that. I'm not sure I recall how much it was. And it's the same ribbing I made at the bottom. So yes, a funny construction, the ones we used to have in the 70s. And uh, it, so it reminded me of that, of that era. And also there is one of you because you gifted me the book with it. And I, there is another pattern I want to make for the book, at least one other pattern I want to make to, from this book. And yes, the Barbara sweater is a very stunning motif, color work. And it was not difficult. It was not that easy, but it was not difficult. The one thing I forgot is, as always, I was knitting of gauge and I got into, into the book and into the pattern and I did not think that I had to cast on less stitches for my arms, for the sleeves. That's okay. And this is a very, very interesting way to use deep stitches to make the color work. And I like deep stitches, and I guess you know that because I'm knitting another sorrel, which is with deep stitches too. And I did like that, that color work a lot. Uh, how, long, how long did it take me to knit the sweater? It took me quite a bit, but not that much do I have it open somewhere so it took me I it took me a month and three weeks so almost two months to knit it and I was quite monogamous once again working on the Barbara sweater and at the end I really 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 wanted it to be finished to be wearing it and it's very warm so what's, that's one other thing, the association of this yarn and the pattern. So the yarn is 
I think it's bigger. It's a bigger yarn that, than what the pattern calls for. And my gauge was, of course, I had less stitches for the 10 centimeters that one the pattern calls for. So it's thicker, I think, that one the original Barbara was made with Isaiah. Did I say it was Mariana Isaiah? And one of her books. And so it's, I think it's a bit thicker than what the original sample looks like or is, but I do like it a lot. And this wool and yarn from Lenal West, it's the same as the one from Atelier Pure Laine. It's very, very dry and airy at the same time. And it keeps you, it keeps moisture away. It won't keep a heavy rain away, but it keeps moisture away. And when you are in a damp and cold environment, it keeps you warm and dry. Last one, I promise, last one. If, if you've been all along and if you are still watching at this point, I thank you a lot and I thank you very, very much. Last one, Missoni accomplished. So another story. So this is a free pattern by Espace Tricot. Another story. You've heard me talk about that story. So to make it short, a colleague of mine was in Bergen and was having a little stroll in the city, went by a yarn store, sent me a picture as a joke saying, oh, that's for you. Never do that. So we went back to the yarn store after we talked a bit. And I had asked, he said, what, do, what, what kind of yarn? I don't need, I don't know yarn at all. And I said, ask the lady for a local untreated yarn. And he brought me Roma Finul because I think the company is quite close to Bergen. So he brought me two balls of each color that are once again undyed and it's a mix of dark and light fleeces to go from this dark, this dark gray, where, which hand, this one, this dark gray to medium gray and to the white. And I had to buy an additional ball, I think, did I buy one or two? I think I, I will have to check, but I think I bought an additional ball. Of course, I ordered it online to finish it because I did not have enough to finish the body and the sleeves. So I used all the gray, the lighter gray. I used all the darker gray. I'm saying this here because it's very late. It's unusual for me to be still working at the table with him around at that late. And so I used all the dark, all the light, and I still have, I think, one ball left of the white. Once again, so it's a lighter sweater. It's a lighter yarn and it's a lighter sweater from the one from Lenal West or Atelier Pure Laine, even if it's fingering weight or sports weight. It's a much lighter, lighter sweater. So I've been wearing it a lot, but not since the weather, the weather has been very cold because it's a bit too, too light for cold, cold, cold weather, unless you have some other things on top of it. People say, once again, they stopped me and saying, oh, where did you buy? And you know, you know that kind of pride proud feeling you have when you say, I did not buy it, I made it. And my, my co-worker, he's the one who got the beanie that I made for him with a sup not superwash, with acronic yarn, so that he doesn't have to take any good care of it. He ju just can, you know, throw it in the washer. And my colleague, when I showed the sweater, when I gave the beanie to him, I was wearing the set sweater and I said, you look what I've done with the yarn. He was very surprised and he said, you made that? And I said, yes, I made that. And it's a free pattern by Espace Tricot on Ravelry. So if you want to make it too, you can, you can, can make it. So Ramses is playing with some of the Christmas stuff I forgot to take out and it's on the table and he's, he's playing with them. So another very interesting knit, the yarn and the pattern go very well together, I think. It was an interesting, it's a in, very interesting pattern. I think the original one, one is all 
light gray with white stripes. But if you look at the Ravelry page for the different projects that have been made, you can have all different types of colors that have been made by people. I, okay, I'm not sure where, how it's going to be cut because he was chewing on the things and not that I do mind, he chews on stuff. It's on the table and he's chewing on them. It's my fault. But, but it was because of the noise. I put all the small decoration under my, the pile of my needs that are next to me. I hope he won't, he won't get to that. Anyway, a very light sweater, not as warm as the other ones from Lena West, for example. Not as, as light, but not as warm, I would have to say. A very interesting yarn, and it did go very well to be knitting with the, this pattern, as always, and I haven't said much in my other patterns. I like twisted ribs for curves and colors. I did not make twisted ribs for the Barbara sweater because it did not, I did not think it would it was going very well with the rest of the pattern but I made twisted rib and I do not recall if the pattern calls for twisted ribs but I did make twisted ribs on the collar on the cuffs and at the bottom of the sweater I did not split the sides of the sweater I did not make a fake seam I just it is just plain and it's a very very enjoyable sweater to be wearing a bit less formal once again and but you know with a with a short jacket it goes very well with that and it's very enjoyable to be wearing i like roma finul if you ever have the opportunity to get some of this yarn I do recommend it because I did not know. I had heard of it by other people. He chose the, or at least the lady from the store chose for me. So I did not ask for that, but I do recommend you, 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 you use that or try out that yarn if, if you have the opportunity to be buying somewhere you are, because it's a very interesting yarn and fingering weight so it's a smaller yarn of course so knitting a sweater like that it's uh, miles and miles of stockinette but if if you want to be doing some kind of my mindless knitting it's just perfect surprise <laughs> surprise it's the next day i film the video you are watching right now and i'm pre-filming another video you will see at the end of this month when I prepare the video that you are currently viewing about a review of the pattern I've knit last year in 2023, I was thinking I don't want to be glorifying parade about the yarn I used and the patterns I've used because there is one pattern I knit and one piece I knit that I'm not wearing. I did not enjoy wearing knitting it. It doesn't fit me and I'm not sure what to be doing with it. Well, when I gathered all my pieces for this review, I could not find this t-shirt. So I said, okay, no problem. I will talk during the video. I, I looked for it, but I said, okay, I will talk about this t-shirt during the video and I will prop up pictures and, and that will be fine. And when I was recording last night, I did not think about it at all. I was so worried because it was all yellow, the, it was late at night, it was all dark. And I was relying on my own lights and it was very yellow and I did not like it at all and it was bothering me the whole time I was recording the video. And I totally forgot to talk about the t-shirt. So the t-shirt I want to be talking about right now and I will insert this piece uh, of recording in, in the current video is the Rainfall Tea by Meret Bitsberger. I knit it between June 19 and June 29, uh, last year of 2023. So that's 10 days. So it was not a difficult knit. I enjoyed very much the idea of this pattern and I used some leftover cotton that my mother gave me and it cotton with a little 
texture and and it's an irregular irregular cotton so i was off gauge but it was not a problem for me because i adjusted all my calculations and stuff the problem is the cotton is very heavy and you see there is there is the rainfall is this part at the front of the t-shirt where you have an extra fab fabric that goes down like rainfall, rain, um, like waterfalls, I guess, like waterfalls in front of the t-shirt. And I like this idea very, very much. It's a very loose, loose knitting, a loose fitting t-shirt, raglan sleeves with a very easy eyelet and, and I think it's twist, twisted knit stitches in the between of the of the yarn overs. Thing is, one, it's quite big, but I don't mind that much. The thing I do not like is that the, the color is very deep and I don't like very deep and very wide necks or necklines. And that's the thing I do not like about it. And it's my mistake. It's not the pattern's fault. It's not Merit's fault because this cotton is too heavy for that. So I had it, in fact, in my pile of things I need to be taken care of as far as sewing, and it was not with my other knitting. So this is what my other knits. So this is why uh, I could not find it. So I'm not sure what I want to be doing. When I just knit it, I said I would knit another additional rows or maybe crochet additional pieces or around the neckline to make it tighter. I'm not sure I would like it either. So I do not know what I'm going to be doing with it. I think what I'm going to be doing is wear it at home when the weather is warmer, of course, because we had snow last night. Very, very uncommon for Normandy, but it's all white and a lot of snow outside. So maybe, and my lady cat wants to go out, but I had, I let her out this morning and I had to get, to go out and get her because she was in the middle of a, of a tree and she would not go down because it was too cold. So I'm letting her inside. So maybe wear it at home, get familiar with the shape and see how it is. The cotton was not pleasant to knit with. It's, the feeling is not good. I think it would be a very nice t-shirt piece for the summer because whenever it gets a little colder or something, so I need to, one, wear it at home, two, decide what I do with it. I think it's going to be a pain to unravel because the blobs in the cotton and the very irregular texture I don't know. So that's one pattern I did not enjoy knitting much. It was a lot of knitting. I did not enjoy knitting it much because of the cotton, not of the pattern. And I do recommend you if you are kind of wanting to make this rainfall t-shirt and you like this kind of necklines, please do it. The pattern is really nice. It's really fine, it's really well written and Merit does a good job at, at writing patterns. But the association of this cotton that makes it very heavy, a bit of a size and a very deep line, I don't like it and I don't wear it. So you may hear Ramses purring next to me. He's on the table. I think, I think he wants my attention because he's been chewing on my cables that are a bit everywhere. So uh, I need to wrap that up anyway because it's, it's quite late. So here is my own evaluation, my own review of the pieces I've made this year and how I paired some patterns with yarn and what, what I do think of that. As I said, I think the, this year has taught me several things. One thing is I like rustic yarn, even though I do enjoy to make other things with other type of yarn. I do like rustic yarn. Nutiden is easiest to be knit double. 
And I think that for flow issues, superwash, non-rustic non superwash wool is much better because even though I like rustic sweaters and I do enjoy rustic shawls, I think for lighter pieces and for the interseason and you know, with the climate change, we are going to go towards warmer days, I guess. So lighter shawls with superwash yarn that is less warm than rustic wool, it's a good idea too. And so there is, there is room for every type of yarn in your wardrobe, in your knit, in my wardrobe and in my knits and for different occasions. And I think this year has taught me, or at least I think this year has given me a better feel of what I like and why I like. So I think I prefer rustic yarn for sweaters and I prefer flowy yarn. So that can be superwash yarn for, for shawls, for example. One thing that I haven't never been knitting is socks. My sons have asked for socks, so I need to buy sock yarn because I don't have any. And I need to dive into the sock world. That's a whole different project. People from the days we were we go to knit, we have a WhatsApp conversation. I asked for yarn recommendations. So they gave me yarn recommendations and I've ordered. So I talked about that in a future video. I've ordered sock yarn for my sons and I need to dive into that. So that will be for this year, a new, a new knitting skill, I guess. And I think last year I did stay into sort of a comfort zone for what I was knitting. Of course, I discovered things and knitted and was one of the big discoveries. And I learned how to knit with knitted and which is a complete different experience from anything you've ever knit with. If you've never knit with unspun, that's one, that's one of a kind. And I also discovered that I said that I like rustic yarn for garments, sweaters and stuff like that. Uh, I think there is room for everything. There is room for superwash. There is room, room for silk and, and, and wool. And once again, I love when I have some of you into my knits. <laughs> I don't know how to say that because I'm not sure it does sound very well in English, but I, I like when there is the spirit of some of other people into my needs. I like when I make the piece. I like when I wear the piece, when I choose it from among other pieces. And this is something also that this year has taught me. I like to have other people into my needs. It's not a call for anything, of course. I'm not asking for anything. It's just something I do like. I do appreciate that. And I have to have spirits in my needs. And I think I do like to have people into my needs because I try to, not all, I don't succeed all the time. I, I'm, I, I, not all the time I do place joy and happiness into my knitting. Not every time I can't, of course I can do that. Not every time I think of you and place you into my little stitches and sending all my good vibes. But I do try to do that very often. And when I succeed in doing this, it does bring me even more joy and happiness than just the fact that I'm knitting something. So I do encourage you to some, from time to time when I think of it to place joy and happiness into your knitting because I do get a lot of joy and happiness when there is some of you into my own knits and when I can think of you 
when I'm knitting because you've been writing a comment and I pick up one of my projects and I think of this comment and I think of a specific person in a specific situation for example and we've exchanged and we've talked either in comments down below the video or on Ravelry or other type of personal messages on social media. I do think of all of that, that's part of my knitting world and this is also what this year ha has taught me. I like very much to think of you when I knit, when I wear my knits and I'm gonna suggest that you do the same, place joy and happiness into your knitting because and into your project because it's not going to be coming all by itself. Not at all. Never. And it's, we do have to work on that, in particular in, when we are in dark times, whether because it's winter where I am and, and the sun goes out early in the afternoon and it goes up late in the evening. So because maybe there is less light, because maybe the situation, the political situation and the wars and everything are surrounding us and is in our world and it's difficult to find joy and happiness given all of that. But if you do place it into your knitting and work on it, every day it builds up and it builds up positive feeling and positive thoughts that and good vibes that I'm sending out to all of you right now and also when I'm working on my little stitches. So I thank you very much for being here with me. I thank you very much for being part of my knitting life. And I thank you very much for being part of my life. And I do hope I will see you next time.